Top reasons to vlog. Um, should I do a list? Uh, a top ten or something? I think I'll just run off a list of the top reasons I think people will vlog. First one is interest. Interest is the most important one. Um, be it a holiday, um, holiday, hobby, a specific skill, travel, or just talking about life. Um, people do it because they're interested in doing and interested in sharing that information. That's number two, sharing information. If you're doing things like Excel spreadsheets or if you're doing um, talking about visiting the country, the tourist spots, it's because you want to share that information with others. Um, it also adds to the next bit, number three, interaction with others of a similar interest or background because number three you're interacting with your people in the comments you're going through their videos as well you know of stuff that you share a similar interest of as such it's it, you learn as well as teaching people stuff that you find and do um, letting your family know travel um, travel and even work overseas um, often is about family orientation. A lot of people vlog for family um, because they're away from home for long periods of time, or they've got some family in some country and some in another. So they, you know, like myself, my daughter's in the UK. I'm here in the, in Spain, but sometimes I'm in the Middle East or the UK, and communication becomes paramount. So vlogging for that reason is another big one. Vlogging for money. Money normally comes secondary to everything else. A lot of stuff on the Philippines these days seems to be more business focused though. Um, I suppose what happens is people realise that they can earn as much, if not more, than their pensions. So they start to move their focus away from, I'll do one video a month or whatever, or when I go to the shops and start focusing on doing a lot more videos on a regular basis and keyword hunting that sort of thing because they can earn good money at it um, long-term sustainable income another good reason why um, videos I did a year ago still make money today videos I do today will still make money next year so the reality is you're gonna have this constant income it may go down may go up but you've still got a constant income of some description um, the advantage you got with being inside the Google Hub of them owning YouTube is that you're not going to get the hassles that you often get with the um, owning your own website where they get hit with the algorithms and stuff um, when Google alters theirs um, because you're already inside Google in some ways, although it's a separate entity, it's still part of the Google. Um, so from that point of view, it gives a little bit of cash flow um, on a consistent basis. For example, if you imagine this channel could make $200 a month, if you had money in the bank earning an interest of 6%, how much money would you actually have to put in the bank f over a year to gain $200 a month? That's, so you're talking $2,400 a year income off YouTube, roughly. So for $2,400 and you're looking at six, let's say 10% to keep the figures going. So to get 10% return, you're going to have to put $24,000 in the bank, um, which is a lot harder than doing videos. Um, so there's that point. The other thing I, I like to do is using it as a catalogue of events. When I'm doing these, because my blog got messed up, um, I had two bad servers and an internet troll that um, damaged some of my stuff online. I've currently got somebody trying to hack my PayPal account. Um, but the, the, the point being here is over a period of time it becomes a lifeline of your events because like here I'm sat in Spain I've got another channel on Spain and discussing life in Spain um, I've started going back to blogging a little bit 
on life in Spain to sort of cover some of the topics that don't need to be in videos but are worth reading or writing, you know, for family members, etc. So you end up with this timeline over a period of time of your life, of your travels, of your holidays, of weddings, whatever you want, you know, whatever you're vlogging about. It could be your career. You could actually be, here I am in Barbados today, I'm here for the next three weeks building a telecommunication station and then going through it all. And then when you move to your next project, you put that up online with the stuff you're allowed to do with, without breaching any of your corporation's uh, codes and standards. Um, but you've created a live curriculum vitae, you know, your CV, your resume. That's actually online. You can actually see the projects you've done. Um, in the same way, if you're learning something, because if you're doing... Like the, the stuff with the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a new little machine for me and my son. So as it develops, we like, oh, oh, you do that and this is how that works. So you create a little video showing how to do something. Then you put it online and you've shared that information with other people. But also, when you've forgotten six months later, you can then do a search on your own videos and actually know where the video was when you did it before. So you can actually use it for research. You can use it for a live diary for learning. Uh, for example, if you're doing language learning, my problem with using things like Duolingo for my Spanish is a lot of the words are not correct for Spanish Spanish because a lot of this stuff assumes everything's American and as America only sees Amer uh, South America and Mexico, etc. It doesn't really look at the fact that Spain, Spain has a lot of different words. But it will, instead of saying South American Spanish, you'll often see them just go, it's Spanish. No, it's not. South American is different. There, there's a, so many different things, even within Spain, but like US, UK, whatever, there's regional dialects. There, there's you know, north of us we have Catalan, which is another um, Spanish language, um, which they're, they're taught in school because it's, you know, it's still utilised it within Spain. But anyway, the fact is you can actually do your videos on your top ten words for the week or five words of the day and then practice your pronunciation because you could go back to it in a year's time and go oh my, my Spanish has improved so much because I can see in the videos that I did last week compared to the ones I did last year how much my language has changed so from that point as well you can actually see yourself progressing as you've developed your skills so there's a lot of reasons to vlog and I would say the money side of it is probably way down here. There are so many other things to be doing. But also don't look at vlogging as the be end and end all. Um, income wise, if you're doing it for income. Here's a prime example. I have 11 pallets of this suntan lotion. It's available in large wholesale quantities. Vlogging about products may bring in a little bit of money but offloading those 11 containers because I do videos on sort of marketing videos on the products for our new venture a business venture um, can have a very positive impact because you can physically see the products um, you could actually what's, what else have we got for example have I got oh, my power inverter and did one on the power inverter and discussed how this works and everything else. There's two sides to this. The first one is people already sell these products, so you've got their customers looking for those products. Um, the next one is you can actually give an honest review, so you have that trust with the people. So if this, for example, I plugged it in and it blew up and I says, well, this melted after five minutes, then that would be an honest review. And you're probably going to get more positive impact out of that than trying to sell 500 of them. Why? 
because when other people buy them and it goes faulty, they'll say that's exactly what happened to me. But if you said they're all fantastic, blah, 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 and they bought them and they all went faulty, they will turn around and go, they lie about their stuff. So I prefer doing the honest bit. I like to go, this is good or bad, and go through it. Like the suntan lotion, this is really good suntan lotion for kids, waterproof. Um, it's waterproof, um, which is important here in Spain because obviously the kids go swimming in the sea in the swimming pools. But there is a lot of people you can utilize that with. Like I said, you've got the customers that are going to Amazon or whatever and looking for these products, and then they're looking for a live review because they know that sometimes there is um, manipulated reviews, would be polite. Um, but then if you come on here and it's like, well, I've just bought one, this is my experience with it, this is how I found it, blah, blah, blah. People are like, oh, okay, it looks sturdy enough, blah, blah, blah. They trust your review. But then if you go in wholesale, like I say, with stuff like this, you go, look, this is the product, works really well, blah, blah, blah. I can't actually review it on my kids. Well, I suppose I could actually review it on my kids. But the trust issue is that I'm selling the product by the pallet load. Um, so, but from a wholesale point of view, it's an easy, good way of marketing as a wholesaler, not as a customer. Because uh, obviously, I'm selling the quantities, I'm not selling the individual. So, there's different ways to do this. And, like I said, even in the review stuff, it's about trust. If you do a review on something that you say, well, this was great, blah, blah, blah. In the same way, I did a review on some cycle bags a while back. Uh, I've had, actually had two new ones come through, and I've got to do a review of these very soon. Because um, the problem I had was it wasn't big enough for my phone. And a lot of people give me earache on it, but the reason I was highlighting the, the size issue is it was a size issue. My phone didn't fit in it because it was a Galaxy Note. But the manufacturer got in touch with me, and they've sent me these new ones that are big, they're much bigger. So there'll be a new review on those, and do I get money for this? The answer is no. I'm doing it because I like the product. The product works really well. I've still got the other one on the bike. What I did is I swapped my um, phone with my wife's phone for when I go cycling because it's a smaller phone. But these ones are actually bigger bags. So the fact is, I can actually do a review here saying, look, these are bigger, and I can do it with the Galaxy Note, the Samsung, uh, what's that, Samsung, whatever they call them, a Samsung phone, and show the size differences. That's important for consumers, because a lot of, time, a lot of the time, you'll just get dimensions of a unit, if that, but the dimensions don't mean a lot to people. A lot of people will not get there a ruler in measure, with a tape measure, the size of the phone, and then check the bag, blah, you know, is that going to fit? Much easier, stick it on video for vlogs, etc. And on top of that, what's wrong with building a bit of um, honest reviews? Honest reviews, you know, if I find a crap product, I'm looking around trying to find one. Um, what have I had lately that was been naff? I actually don't have anything that I can actually say was rubbish. Um, yeah, I haven't got any bad products. Um, but the, the thing is, <laughs> even when something doesn't work properly, it's worth doing a review and being honest with it and saying, like I said with the bag, my phone didn't fit, and that was the only negative thing I said about it. Um, and even the manufacturer got in touch with it because many people see the review, but it's honest. And that's what matters. Honest vlogging. Honest about everything around you. And I know a lot of people just seem to hide from reality, but that's up to them. Um, if they want to be constantly positive, you know, like a travel tour video where everything's grey, you know, da, da, da. that's fine because that's tourist mode. If you live there, it can be very different. It's like La Mata in the summertime for tourists, it's all you know, bells and whistles. In the winter, it's very quiet. But at the same time, we live here, so we see both worlds, but we're happy when it's quiet, as well as when it's busy. It doesn't really affect us. Um, but the whole point is doing what suits you for your vlogs. That's the important bit. Um, 
the other side of this being is you get used to camera equipment. You get used to talking in public. You get used to um, get, being able to communicate a lot easier because you improve your voice. You improve your tone. You don't talk too, too fast or you don't mumble. You, you start to talk much clearer because you understand that when people go, I can't understand the words you're saying in your comments, that you need to reduce some of the problems that you have within your own accent or um, arms and, uh, and you start to become more professional as such if you want to go to professional speaking at some point if you sat here for hours and hours you have consistently been improving your personal ability to go on stage uh, would most people be comfortable to go out in front of a class or go and do a presentation on the fly, etc.? I don't know. Uh, myself, I do everything on the fly. As you see, I just grab something off the shelf. I don't generally sit there and script things. I will actually work out a header for something, then I'll just use that as a topic and then just do an entire ream of information off that topic. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I know I blabbed on a bit. But I just want to say there's loads of reasons to vlog and they're all positive. Thanks for watching.